Um, yeet, 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 yeet. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Um, this guy popped out of nowhere. Um, I listened to the first album, which was what? Oh, what the bloody name of the first album? The first album I stumbled, I don't know how I stumbled across it. Maybe it was on a forum. Yeah, the first album I stumbled across on was an album called Up To Me. Right? This album called Up To Me. And yeah, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was very interesting sonically wise. Um, I thought it might have sounded a little bit reductive, a little bit copycat in the kind of the lane of kind of Playboy Carti sort of thing. But I understood it. You know, these young kids coming up, people like Carti are going to be a big inspiration to you because clearly in that kind of field, in that genre, in that, in that kind of zone that he makes music, he's one of a kind. And there's not a lot of people that are making music of that quality or that level. So clearly, if you're going to be inspired by anyone, you're going to be inspired by him. Makes sense. But then it also got me thinking about Yeet, similar to what I've said about the possession party, about maybe this is a good indication, like if you ever you needed one, of how old you're getting, of how you react to stuff like this. Because this album, this new album called Two Alive, that just came out the other day, <coughs> it actually leaked in its entirety like a couple of days before that, which is fucking nuts. It seems to happen quite often with a lot of these younger sort of like rappers. A lot of their albums just seem to drop in this entirety before they actually meant to release, which leads me to believe that maybe a lot of it is kind of like planned and it's all kind of part of the whole troll marketing campaign that they do. Because trolling now is kind of, is, is basically a marketing campaign at the moment. You know I mean, Doja Cat and Lil Nas X are probably two of the flipping experts at doing that sort of thing at the moment. But um, And also he had this flipping thing recently where he put on a concert um as at a venue in LA which from what I've gathered from people that live over there or in America that allegedly the capacity of this venue was far over anything that he w was was far too small for any performance he could have put on so clearly the label maybe did it on purpose where they put on a performance so they, they booked a, a, a performance for him to they booked a venue where he could go and perform his sort of like kind of his new album and the hope was that pe loads of people would turn up. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, also, he put on his Instagram page, oh, if you don't have a ticket, turn up anyway. So did the whole Travis Scott rage sort of thing. Clearly, you know, luckily it wasn't fatal, the consequences, but they clearly did that as a kind of marketing campaign where if you book a venue that's smaller than capacity that you can, well, that's kind of smaller than what you actually need, it's going to be oversubscribed. Then you tell your artist to go and put that Instagram story, telling people to come anyway if they don't have tickets and you're going to get them in. And then it's going to lead to people you know, going crazy on the streets, roadblocks, police, sirens, helicopters, you know, perfect materials for like a bit of B-roll on a new music video or whatnot. And just to kind of add to the overall kind of allure of the guy. But um, yeah, this new Two Alive, like I said, if you want uh, if you want an indication of how old you're getting, listen to Yeet Two Alive um, and you'll definitely get an indication of whether or not you're young or old. Because I feel like for me, I thought Up To Me was a far better album musically. I felt like it was the tracks were more interesting to listen to. But then I think if you listen to Two Alive from the beginning to the end, it feels more like a vibe. It's a lot more like it 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 kind of sounds like to me perfect music to get to to flip and get high off. To smoke something on pills, whatever else you like to take, drinks, whatever else. It definitely is on that kind of lane, more so than it is for up to me, that kind of again I thought sounded like a traditional kind of new era sort of hip-hop type mixtape type thing whereas this two alive definitely sounds like turn up music and it got me thinking a lot about whole or red by playboy carty an album that i originally didn't like when it first came out but then the more that i listened to it the more that i started seeing performances of him performing it live in front of an audience it kind of tried to take another life of its own which is weird because usually i'm the biggest playboy carty fan like you know i still maintain that die lit might have been you know one of the greatest albums to come out of the last 10 years or whatnot. Do you know what I mean? Incredible, genre-defying album. Um, probably is a fact that's going to be felt for years and years and years to come. But when Whole Lot Red came out, don't get me wrong, I wasn't, it wasn't like I was expecting him to make Die Lit 2, but it just didn't sound as interesting. And even the songs, I don't think a lot of people can argue that Die Lit has way better songs on it than what Whole Lot Red does. But Whole Lot Red is such a unique vibe, sonically, emotionally, and 
kind of performative wise how he kind of puts a show on it kind of just has a whole different life to itself like that's why i've always kind of wondered why whether or not why these guys especially the people like this type like yeet and stuff who make this kind of vibe music why don't they just why don't they put out live albums or live dvds or whatever or something or along those kind of lines why not because when I, when I was listening to metal back in the day, or when I used to go to metal festivals, you know, the likes of Pippin Iron Maiden were, you know, notorious for putting out incredible live albums of their tours that they'd kind of done. You know, notorious tours in maybe parts of South America and whatnot that went off really well, that were well received. They would obviously take, it's a lot of money to record a live show, don't get me wrong, but they'd package it together in a way that would make it kind of interesting for fans that weren't able to go to the flipping Buenos Aires or whatnot. And it would also give the album that they might have maybe not liked another opportunity to kind of live again. Like you breathe new life into an album that might have not been received as well. And I feel like to me, personally to me, Playboy Carty's Whole Lot of Red definitely benefited greatly from him doing live performances. I think if he wasn't able to put on those live shows, that album would have been a dud. It wouldn't have recovered. I think the fact that the live shows came back and he was able to perform in that interesting way with the flipping, you know, the, with that Jeep on the on the stage that Kanye gave him, coming out with the guy and the guitar, improvising tracks like it, it, like even the performances. You look from the first performance at the Narcissist tour to the end to so the last one. I think they did in maybe Atlanta or whatnot. The you know the, the show evolved over the over the time and people w knew what to expect. They were going in there with the high expectations. The setlist was interesting, blah 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 blah. But again, vibe music. So I think when it comes to Yeet, I would maybe like to see how this resonates with a crowd in the actual audience. Because when I listen to it, I just think to myself like, this is perfect music to get high on. Be in your room somewhere, lights dimmed, right, lighting a candle and just having a you know having a bit of a closed eye session that way. But is it really turn up music? I'm not too sure if it is. Um, but the one thing we can't deny is that Yeet as an artist is in a very <coughs> unique, interesting place because as much as he sounds like a Playboy Carti clone, I also think in terms of his fan appeal, it kind of reminds me a little bit of that young lean. It doesn't have people are so rabidly fans of his, even though he hasn't put out that much music or he hasn't been around that long. And the fact that he looks the way he does, I think if I'm not mistaken, he's like half, you know, to put it plainly, I think he's more than that, but he's basically half Romanian, half Mexican, but he's got more of a Romanian-y, European type looking face, which I think is going to lend very well to the European market because we already saw what, um, six nine did when he came over to Europe. Like he was really popular, like more popular than people would actually would have imagined him to be when he came to Europe. And obviously, his legal troubles maybe have put a kind of stop to that, or maybe the fact that he doesn't make music maybe put a stop to that. I don't really know, but I think Ye might end up being a very rich man very quickly, based on how he's able to kind of parlay this hype on the internet into live shows into tours and then into going abroad overseas because i think if he's able to smash overseas and tour places like belgium france italy like germany and shit like he is going to be cleaning up like you know scandinavia like come on this guy will clean up this sound kids love it <coughs> especially the newer kids coming up and i heard someone saying oh it's too derivative it's too copycat clark carty but think think about it right think if you're a kid and you're the age between like I don't know, 14 and 23. And, you know, Dial It has come out and then a whole lot of Reds come out. That That's maybe the benchmark of that, the high count. And maybe if to you, Playboy Carter, when you're that age, he's maybe like the Jay-Z of, of the level, right? He's super, super stardom. But you want to get someone new of your own because that's what always happens in music. You want to find a new artist of your own that you can kind of champion and get behind and kind of watch their rise. But if you jumped on the Carter vibe, by the time Holo already came out, it's already too late. Do you know what I mean? The hype's already gone. He's an established artist. You're not really part of that journey anymore. So when you see someone like a Yeet come along, you can jump on at the beginning. It sounds quite similar. It's also very different in its own way. And it's easy to turn up to. It's not really offensive. Like it doesn't, I don't know. I, I never got the need to kind of turn it off. It was a perfect music to have again. In the background, if you're getting high, in the gym somewhere, if you're working out, on your commute it's just easy kind of like music to kind of like pop your head to a couple of features might stand out here and there obviously young fucks feature on the second track outside is really fantastic but apart from that it all kind of flows into each other with all the songs they all kind of blend into each other they don't really stand out as much as up to me i thought did i thought up to me had some really good standout tracks that kind of jumped out at you and kind of got your attention but 
I can kind of understand why kids like it. I can understand why older people can think this stuff is garbage because it doesn't really say anything of merit um, or anything worthwhile to kind of like sit down and think, oh yeah, man, that's a deep bar. There's some bar about Nipsey Hussle that's just like, you know, throw away, whatever. Um, but I think if he's able to play it smart, he's able to take this internet hype into live shows, take that into touring, take that into going overseas, he's going to destroy Europe. And he will be very rich in very short space of time. He might end up doing what Pop Smoke did. No, sorry, what um, Lil Pump did in terms of that ability to make a high amount of money in a very short period of time. Obviously, Lil Pump was aided a lot because of that whole contract thing he did, right? Where I think he got finagled into signing a deal when he was underage. Then he got a new management and they were able to get him compensation and get him out of the deal because he was underage and signed that deal. So that was a clever little thing that he was able to kind of spin back and kind of use to his advantage. But apart from that, he did make a very, he did make a lot of money in a short space of time. Now, the only thing I worry about him is that if you're an artist musically and if you really, really want to kind of expand your sound and you know be a bit more interesting does he have that in him i'm not too sure can he kind of is are there other levels to yeet i don't know if there are does it matter who knows if it does maybe this is the whole point of the new sound or this new generation that we're kind of living amongst maybe they're just happy to kind of run it up be able to cash in their checks you know take their mamas out of their project housing or whatnot you know, give their boys some money and then keep it moving. That's probably enough. And if you're, you know, if you're kind of um, savvy enough with your investments and stuff and you're able to make, you know, 10 million plus or whatnot, you could effectively not have to work for life if you invest that in the right places. Just off your Instagram alone, you could probably be able to recoup a lot of money during you know, sponsorships and ads and whatnot. So the sky is obviously a limit, but I can never understand why people don't like it. But it's definitely a reminder of like how old you get when you hear this sort of stuff. You're like, what is this? Like, it doesn't even sound interesting. Not great. The musical blends into each other, but I liked it. I, I, I got to be honest, I liked it, but I still think Up To Me um, was far better as an album overall, in my personal opinion. But, you know, what do I know?